Good evening. My name is Jill Cardinal, and this is the Zoom session for the Hawk Talks. And we are tonight discussing internships and research that you can do at Ripon. I'm uh, joined here by some uh, Ripon faculty and Ripon current students who will talk about their experiences and just kind of enlighten folks on what the possibilities might be um, should you choose to come to Ripon in the fall. Uh, I'll start with introductions. Um, if Mark, if you would uh, start off tonight telling us your name and department, um, maybe a little bit about yourself, and we'll start sure. there. My name is Mark Cole. I'm an associate professor and chair of the Department of Exercise Science. Uh, my area of research is into the psychology of physical activity and sport. Wonderful. And then uh, Julia, Professor Maynard joins us. If you would like to share a little bit about yourself. Yeah, I'm Dr. Julia Maynard from the psychology department. And I do work on animal behavior and psychobiology, so kind of neuroscience research as well. Good. And we have current students. So Mika Rivera, if you want, want to talk a little bit about yourself. Yep. Um, my name is Mikaela Rivera. I go by Mika. I'm a senior and I'm majoring in psychobiology and I've done um, several internships primarily with um, animal behavior. So very good. And then Noah, last but not least. Yeah. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Noah Fish. I'm a senior and I am a double major in sports management and communications. Perfect. Great. So Mika, I know that you have some exciting news tonight uh, that's happening and actually it happened, right? Currently, yep. if you wanna tell us a little bit about that particular research project and then maybe we'll dive into uh, the work you've done in the psychology department with Professor Maynard. Yep, um, so uh, today I, I, um, is, is the release date of a paper that I worked on with um, some colleagues for where I, I internshiped at, at the Marine Biological Laboratory in Woods Hole, Massachusetts. So I was able to do that my um, summer after my freshman year. Um, I found out about this internship and I was able to apply and I had Professor Julia Maynard help me out a lot and I was able to conduct research um, and learn about the research field when it comes to animal behavior. Um, and so now we're um, being published currently for self-control in cuttlefish. So that's what I'm wearing right now, the cuttlefish shirt. So, yeah. Nice, very good. Uh, Professor Maynard, can you talk a little bit about some of the research that you've done and, and how students have maybe been involved with that over the last several years? Sure. So we have a few different research projects that we've been working on in my lab. Um, one set has been with rats and we've been looking at self-control and Mika helped with that early on um, in her career as well. So we were training rats to see self-control, whether they would wait for things to happen instead of being impulsive and trying to get things right now. Um, we also have been doing research on enrichment in rats. So how does providing different sorts of stimuli and toys to rats, how does that change their behavior, their mental health? How does that also change their brains? Um, and then we also have been doing research in dogs. And so one of my big areas of research in dogs is on empathy in dogs. So dogs show a, an emotional response to their distressed owner or a distressed stranger. So Mika helped me out with that study. She was the uh, distressed stranger and uh, she had to either pretend to cry or to hum uh, twinkle twinkle little star and measured what dogs did in response to to her either crying or, or humming. Very good. Um, how, Mika, how did you decide to, to do some of that kinds of research and things on campus? What was your initial, I guess, stepping into the campus? What, what did you think you wanted to study? How did you get into these particular areas? Well, I've always been fascinated with animals. My earliest childhood memory is I was bath time with me and my twin sister and my dad walks in and my mom's like, girls, look at what Poppy found in the backyard. And it was this giant black rat snake. And we were all so excited. And that sounds horrifying to some people, but it was, that's my earliest childhood memory. And I just remember being so excited and I always had a passion for animals. So coming to Ripon, I was really excited about the, the psycho bio program because 
you could learn about animal behavior, which is what I'm really interested in. And my first uh, class uh, freshman year was um, with Julia for psychology. And she has her PhD in animal cognition. And we started talking and she was like, do you want to be a part of my lab? And I was like, yes, of course. And so that's where it really started is with the help of um, Julia, who and many professors here do a great job of reaching out to students and being like, hey, I think this might be something you're interested in. So that's how it started. Good. So speaking of that, Julia, would you say that how many students in a yearly basis do you feel like can do research just with you? Is there a number of, you know, in your yeah. classes and things? So I typically in my personal research lab outside of classwork, um, I have um, typically around five to eight students who are working with me. I think we're nudging up to closer to 10 because I realized half yeah. my research lab is graduating too. So I was trying to recruit some of the younger ones to, uh, to help out a little too, uh, because I came in in the same year that Mika did. I ended up with sort of a whole big group of seniors this year um, who then are going to leave me. So I, I've been recruiting a little bit more from younger students as well. Um, but basically I'm, I'm willing to have as many students as who are, who are interested work with me. I also work very closely with Dr. Robin Forbes Lorman over in the biology department. So she is also a neuroscientist. And so we work together on a lot of projects. So we share many students and they'll often work with me on behavior. And then they work with her on the more cellular molecular levels of, of neuroscience and more biological features. Thank you. Great. Professor Cole, let's turn to you a little bit in the exercise science program. I know there's lots of internships uh, in that particular major and uh, department. Can you tell a little bit about some things that you've seen students do in the way of internships? Yeah, I'm actually going to, I don't know if I can steal the screen here briefly. Um, but so our internships, I'd love to rattle them all off, but I think I put everybody to sleep. <laughs> um, running across this left-hand side of the screen. So we have opportunities for all four of our majors and students who are doing any of our four minors in the department to do internships. It's an integral part of their hands-on experience. So whether it's working with adapted PE opportunities or up at a healthcare facility uh, or something a little closer to home, say uh, going down here, Fond du Lac and um, at the Wilmore Center or here with the college community, um, all of our majors are focused on some portion of physical activity, whether it's um, uh, sport management, potentially students are interested in branding, who are interested in marketing, or the administration piece. They've done them, uh, their internships with our athletic department, uh, or they've worked with our marketing and our promotions department for the college as a whole. They actually help design a lot of the uh, signage around campus. So. Lots of hands-on opportunities. And in addition to that, we have the research commitment as well. You can see one of our students posters there on the left that she presented at a national meeting um, started as an internship uh, where she was doing some older adult fitness and then it morphed into a senior seminar project and then it morphed into a year long um, project that she ended up, uh, or I should say research project that she ended up presenting nationally. So, um, they all start with internships, and we hope they go in this direction, but uh, not all of them do, but they're good experience, and they're important. Great. Noah, you did an internship last summer, I believe it was. Talk about that a little bit and how that, how you got into it and what that experience was like for you. Of course. Um, so this last summer, I worked with the Wisconsin Rapids Rafters baseball team. Uh, it's a Northwoods League team. And I was the graphic design intern, intern for them. Um, basically, if they needed anything with a logo put on it, I was the one making the doodles up for them and getting it sent out to everybody. Um, I really found out about that opportunity just through uh, working with the Career Center here. Uh, Sarah Hathaway was a big help, um, just kind of helping me present myself the best I can with resumes and LinkedIn, online applications and all that. And um, thankfully, like with COVID and everything going on, the Rafters were one of the few teams that were able to have sports uh, this last summer. So 
it was just a really cool experience of watching baseball and being around that, but also doing a little bit of graphic design on the side as well. And your majors again, remind me, communication and? Sports management. Sports yeah. management, thank you. So a nice fit there then, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Right. Um, Professor Cole, our students, for the most part, exercise science, they are all doing some sort of internship as part of their major. Is that, tr that true? Uh, yeah, the only exception to that rule would be our physical education majors because they do have student teaching. So that, that's sort of a swap out. Otherwise, everybody has to do four credits of an internship um, and six credits of research. So uh, to dovetail those together is a, is a good opportunity. How do you think that that speaks to those students who graduate with that experience then um, going into the real world? Yeah, the real world. You know, that's funny you should uh, mention that because we have a, a student who actually graduated, uh, they finished master's, their master's a year and a half ago and was kind enough to send a note and say, thank you so much for the internship and the opportunities because otherwise I never would have worked with, in their case, older adults. Um, it was a different student, our older adult programs been very attractive for our students but they said I would have never thought to go this way I didn't know my career could go that way and so one of the things we encourage our students to do with the internships is um, explore maybe have a central site or a central person they work with but then do some you know tentacles reaching out in different areas so that because they're the field of exercise science is so broad Noah's a great example he likes graphic design but you know, there's ticketing that happens at that um, uh, that venue as well. And there's advertising, there's promotions, and that's part of graphic design. So uh, the more they do, the merrier. And uh, we're also really supportive. I have a student who's doing one um, in Catalina Island off the coast of Los Angeles, uh, which is actually her home right now. Um, and so they can do them anywhere. Uh, you know, we can make the arrangements to do them wherever they want. We'll try to visit them too for make sure everything's okay. <laughs> so those are, again, you're saying that professors are helping to get those set up. It's not like students are running around, not trying, not knowing where to go to get an internship. Yeah, and I, I, I'm happy that Noah was able to connect with our career services. Uh, and we obviously have this list available and, you know, students are constantly coming in thinking, all right, what can I do? When can I do it? They can be done during the school year. They can be done during the summer, um, over breaks, um, you know, just depending on timing and, and those kinds of things. With COVID, we've had to be a little more flexible because our students who are interested in healthcare have not had uh, as much access as they have before. That's finally starting to loosen up. But what we've done in those cases is we sort of fractured the internship. So maybe they do some over the New Year's holiday and then a little bit over the summer. But, you know, we just... We've had to accommodate and, and that's fine. We're flexible with that. Um, it's about the internship experience. So they've been really happy with where they've gone. And our motto is that even a bad internship experience is a good experience, um, as long as it's safe, obviously, because uh, it's important for students to learn what they do not want to do. Uh, and that's just as important as learning what you do want to do. Great example. I remember a student when I first started at Ripon, you know, almost eight years ago that did I believe six internships in her four years at Ripon and part of it one of those things was something that she learned that she didn't want to do yeah. so I'm glad you made that comment because it really is true it's not just about learning what you want but what maybe you're not cut out for or yeah. you know you don't want to go into a career and find out later that you don't like it so to try it while you're in school um, Mika and Noah maybe you can share a little bit about your reasoning to choose Ripon and now that you're you're at the end almost. Um, maybe some advice you have for students who are looking at Ripon. Noah, do you want to start off with that one? Yeah, sure. I can take that. Um, man, I'm getting some flashbacks. I feel old right now thinking back <laughs> to when I decided to come here. Um, but I think definitely what attracted me was uh, it was close to my family. I, I had a chance to play soccer out here, and athletics was a big part of my life at the beginning still is and um, obviously just the small town feel is a big attraction for me and I enjoyed that but I mean advice for anybody looking at Ripon um, I excelled here and had a great time because um, 
I really put the work in and this place is what you make it. And um, I think along with that is other people notice that too. So if your professors, students, friends, anybody around here, if they see you putting the work in, they'll give a helping hand. And uh, if I had like a half hour, I could probably name all the people who have helped me here, but it's, it's a really great place to be for sure. Well said. Mika, how about you? Um, when I first came to Ripon, um, so this is a lot smaller than River Falls where I'm from. I was like, I'm not so sure it's a pretty small area, but the college, I like how small it is because you really get to build your relationships with your professors. Um, I am very close with some of them and they have helped me so much, not only become better in my field, but I've become a more critical thinker. I've learned how to look at problems um, in more, more complex ways and they've helped change my entire outlook on my life and what I see as my purpose for research and animal behavior. Um, some advice, again, as Noah said, this place is what you make of it. Um, you don't be afraid to take those big chances. Um, applying to internships can be scary. It's a lot of work, but when you get there, um, it's a whole different eye-opening field for you and can really help you believe in yourself like, oh, wow, you know what? I do have the ability to take these big milestones and take these big risks in order to make a better future for myself. Thank you. Um, I want to just touch back again with Julia. What are some things you're working on now, maybe this coming year or summer? Do you have any plans for research with students this summer at all? Yeah, so Mika and I are actually working to publish her research study, so the one on the empathy. So she's currently working on writing that up and getting it ready to go out for publication. Um, we are also doing some research on aggression in dogs. So we are interested in physiological of aggression, looking at heart rate and heart rate variability and how that might be able to environments impact dogs stress levels through heart rate variability. So we've been putting heart rate monitors on dogs and measuring them in woods areas and while they're playing and while they're resting, all kinds of different contexts to see how that changes it. And then I also have a research student who's gonna work with me on enrichment in the summer with the rats. Wonderful. And is that something that students, um, they, do they get paid in the summer to do research? And then can they do that anytime during their four years at Ripon? Yeah, so um, typically there's enough funding for about one student per, per person who's interested and it's not guaranteed, but most of the time people who ask for a student get a student for the summer. Um, I'd say on campus, we typically end up with eight-ish students who stay over the summer to do research. And um, yeah, they get paid. I can't remember exactly what the stipend is, but they get stipend mm -hmm. and they also get room and board over the summer as well. Um, so yeah, it's a great opportunity for them to get some research experience in, mostly in the sciences, although occasionally we'll have somebody from humanities or fine arts as well. Wonderful. Noah, what, uh, what are your plans after graduation? Um, I'm just trying to take it day by day a little bit right now, but definitely on the grad school hunt, um, mm -hmm. hoping to get accepted to my number one school of UCLA and just continue my career in uh, sports marketing and sports management. And Mika, how about you? Plans um, for after graduation? Yeah, I am at research jobs um, all across the country, uh, different marine institutes primarily. Um, so, and then also aquariums and zoos. Uh, so applying a lot of different places, including like Hawaii, um, Marine Biological Laboratory, um, different islands off the um, West. So very exciting, different um, possibility. And then eventually after a couple years of getting more research under my belt, hopefully I will get into grad school and get my PhD. Great. 
And speaking of that, I guess my uh, final question to our professors here is, um, I know a lot of students do go on for their uh, grad, grad school or PhD and things like that. What are some things that you've seen students do that are just right out of school too, without having to go on further for education? Any examples that you can share? Yeah, I have a few. Um, so with psychology, people sort of are, have the impression that you really have to go to grad school if you get a major in psychology, mm -hmm. which is not the case at all. We have lots of people who do work with healthcare, collecting data. So they love the fact that our students have a good data background. They know how to deal with spreadsheets, things like that. Um, I have a student who's currently working at Cleveland Clinic and she is a research assistant. So she helps um, train animals for their research labs. Um, I have a student who went on to take their religion <laughs> they took a religion minor and a psychology major and they do end of life counseling at a hospital. So there's lots of interesting careers that you can end up with, with these majors. Uh, applied behavioral analysis is another huge field of working with kids who have autism, um, training them how to show appropriate social cues is another huge area where we have lots of undergraduates get jobs right out of college. Very nice. Professor Cole, anything you can share to that? Yeah, similarly, we have a number of students who uh, start working right away in the health and wellness fields, whether it's, uh, there's certainly an abundance of personal training uh, positions out there, but uh, oftentimes students will uh, sort of morph a little bit from the individualized to the corporate wellness. Uh, corporate wellness and corporate fitness prior to COVID was a really important and growing sector. Um, also cardiac rehab. Um, as well as some of the uh, hands-on community uh, recreation, youth sports. We have a student who went right out and took a position at uh, running a YMCA and a boys and girls club, sort of a cooperative endeavor. Um, so there are plenty of uh, uh, positions immediately right after graduation. Grad school isn't a necessity. Great. And of course, this is just we, we talked a lot about exercise science field and psychology. There's many more options on campus and jobs and professors. And I think this is just again, a sampling of what we have and some of the things that students can do because we are small. Uh, I think both students said it well, if, if you put into it, you're gonna get some good results out of it and working closely with our faculty and other um, college uh, staff and, and members. So with that, I want to uh, thank our, our guests tonight to share their experiences and enlighten some of those folks out there who are considering Ripon uh, and those who are of course already thinking of enrolling or are signed up to enroll. You may see Professor uh, Cole and Professor Maynard on campus next semester. So thank you and have a wonderful evening.